With London Fashion Week in a state of flux, Show Studio wanted to spotlight the designers that lead the way, no matter the shape shifting of the fashion climate. Unique, inspiring, forward thinking, we want to introduce you to menswear designers Nicholas Daly, Priya Alawalia, and Stefan Cook, and womenswear designers Richard Malone and Matty Bovin. Meet the designers redefining London Fashion Week. For even more content just like this, subscribe to Show Studio's YouTube channel. Fashion design is a funny one. It wasn't fashion to begin with, but it was definitely people and the body and, um, yeah, like human interaction, really kind of tactile, making with hands, all of those things always fascinated me. And I, I was working with my dad during the course and during doing my A-levels on building sites. So I was very, I was around a lot of like quite industrial materials. Um, and I was building these things and then I was putting them on my body with no kind of frame of reference. They were just quite abstract. Um, I think fashion came a bit later because I, was, I became very interested in the sort of tailoring aspect of it, but I was always kind of making things in fabric or even in metal or wood or concrete or like, it was just kind of, I guess, like a compulsion. I can remember a lot, my mum really enjoying clothes and really enjoying buying things, but not having that much money. So I feel like I can remember constantly going to like charity shops and stuff with her. And I feel like that's kind of where it began. Um, Although I never really did anything until college. It was very much me going to college, the second college, because I got kicked out of my first college. <laughs> With fashion, you could just, you could still be just as creative, but then that thing that you were working on would potentially get worn. The idea was it would be worn by someone and absorbed into their life. And that's more attractive to me than, than an art object. I remember when I was a kid, like trying on all my mum's clothes all the time. I used to wear her like, she had this like, she's gonna kill me for telling people this, but she had this like red silky nighty. <laughs> and I used to wear it and it would be so like big for me, like it would be down here. So I'd be running around my booze around and I just loved it. I felt like I was so like, um, I don't know, like fashionable and <laughs> interesting, I don't know. So from ever since I can remember, and I used to like um, have sketchbooks and like draw, outfits all the time like different dresses and I was mainly thinking about women's wear at that time but I was yeah I've always 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 been into it. I was always very crafty as a kid and as a teenager you know um, anything crafty I would want to do um, just the enjoyment of it I think the process and stuff for me uh, made sense, which is still uh, really key today in what I do. You know my mum's a big knitter like she's always knitting stuff and you know, that sort of craft thing within the family. And then also on my dad's side, you know, my dad's, my grandfather, he was a shoemaker back in Jamaica, like making shoes for like the community. So I definitely feel like, um, you know, within my family heritage of like clothing or like expressing yourself through clothing, you know, whether it's like a knitted scarf or hat or jumper, which my mum's made me or my dad or family, or whether it's, you know, looking back historically, at, family members who might have, you know, done something within fashion. The first time I actually made clothes properly was like my final collection. And I, I wasn't really, I don't know if I was planning on doing my own brand at that point. And I know even now I don't necessarily think of it like, I guess it is a brand, but I, know, I just think of myself as a designer. It is very much still me and uh, even the core of the business, like what makes money and pays for the studio and for staff or whatever is us making clothes for real women who actually exist and who order it and it's very intimate and that's that's kind of the relationship that I got excited about when I first got to St Martin's you know when I was saying that people are really look at clothes and you watch people try them on and you watch people's posture change and you watch you can really see people adapt those clothes to their life. I think it was like my masters when I really thought okay like I can't be in education for this long, just like not doing anything. So <laughs> I think that's where all, this, all systems go. I guess the brand literally came out about um, just because I won the L'Oreal uh, award with Gabby Skukas. Um, we joint won it. And I think that's when it really like kind of hit home as like a validation of like that it could become something. Because I think beforehand, you're not really focused on being like, I'm going to be, I'm going to make a brand. I'm going to do this. I feel like it's in the back of your mind and we've had conversations about it being like, oh, like fairy tale kind of situation. But that night where you won the h &M Award was just like, it was unbelievable. I remember being in a taxi and not being able to pay my phone bill for about four months before. Someone managed to call me or something and was like, congratulations to Stefan. And I was like, did he win? Did he win? And they were like, yeah, he won, didn't you know? And it just, because it didn't just mean like winning money. It was like, 
well, he's going to start the brand then. Like, yeah, and that's it felt what like that a real, meant. that's like stamp of approval that you kind of, not that you need, but it just does make things a lot easier to be able to feel like the industry is kind of being like, go on. Like, and then we had should five weeks it. to do the collection, didn't we? Yeah, which is really intense. <laughs> so I was at college and yeah, kind of, I remember just like coming up with all these ideas and I don't really know where they even came from. It was kind of very much just fully formed in a way. And even now it's still colours I use these days, it's still shapes and references. It was very much more naive, way more naive, because I didn't know what I was doing. But, um, you know, so it kind of all came together in the synthesis, which was nice. And I was looking up to get into the Central St. Martin's BA menswear course. So I did that for four years. And um, that was, like, amazing. Just, like, sort of blew my, blew my head, really. Um, you know, like, I've been coming down to London to see family and, you know, for whatever... But, you know, to, to move down here and, uh, you know, to be immersed with all the different cultures, like, you know, within the school as well as outside of it, like it was Japan, uh, my first stockist, when they saw my graduate collection and then um, they wanted to meet me and I showed them my work and they were like, yeah, we want to place an order. I guess like your first order, you always kind of remember. It was like, it was like in some friend's studio in Dalston and I had like one rail like were like like six pieces and then i was like re i didn't even have a line sheet or anything they just like came in trying to think about the amount of time it can take to do one thing or another and also like falsify the amount of time that was kind of the writing concept in the beginning wasn't it, it was just like yeah it was about value and time and money or lack of money and kind of pretending and yeah it's this idea of craft without it being crafty i think that's just we're just trying to explore yeah kind of fashion history through our own fingertips what's valuable in fashion history because like you could go to an archive and rent this really collectible perfecto jacket for like three grand for the month or you could just like literally spend your life in charity shops and like trying to find like value like kind of things that are invaluable in those places like yeah and like dissecting that and giving that a value as well yeah, it's a brand that's finding value in, like, everything rather than, like, pinnacle stuff. Rather mm. than being like, oh, this is, like, old Balenciaga from whenever. It's like, oh, no, this is actually just, like, a crappy top that somebody made on a sewing machine in, like, the 60s. But it's and, good like, for this reason. Yeah, but, yeah. like, Pick that's out. the value of it, yeah. You know, being, like, mixed race, you know, uh, white mother, black father, and, like, you know, uh, I guess exploring identity, my own identity, um, and those cultures and I think obviously fashion is like a great communicator of that it's like the first communicator like before you even speak you know people see you or you're communicating yourself through what you're wearing not everyone can speak the same language but everyone can see what you're wearing <laughs> the word empowered gets thrown around loads and I'm not you know it's so different for two different people and that's really something that I have to try and build into the brand because I'm the same like on one day like now I'm wearing like shirt and shorts and feel grand but other days you know you want to have like one of those showy things on and I think understanding that understanding and kind of almost suggesting ways of dressing for different women um there isn't a design team you know really there's like it's it's very much me and it's very it's very much like in a way what I want to wear if I was one of those sort of fabulous women that buys clothes from us you know and I was working with a really well-known artist and she was wanting to she usually is very conservative and buys the tailoring is like her thing. And then we were going to some, it was like the White Chapel for some dinner thing. And I remember her saying that she wanted to buy this dress to get laid in. And I thought that was so fab because I never think of my clothes like that, you know. I never think that I'm just, but that's like, what a compliment is that's going to work out for you in that way. I'm like, that's perfect. But that whole side of what happens to our clothes I had not even maybe even considered properly or really thought about. There was always the thinking about like recycled materials on the front end side, on the design side, but there wasn't that post-consumer kind of element to my thinking. So I'm always collecting different sources and to an outside eye, they might seem random, but to me they're not. If I'm pulling references from different places, I really look at that work and think, or that image or that research or whatever, and really think, what is it that I, I'm getting from that. Like, is it inspiring me for colour, texture, proportion, silhouette? So then I start to like move the board around accordingly and then um, sketching and sampling happens. So it's kind of, I love the research bit. It's my favourite bit. 
as a creative person, perspective is really important and it's quite hard when you're in the middle of it to kind of be like, this is what I'm trying to say. But for me, I do have a lot of books I've collected over the years, um, loads, and loads of old magazines, which I always go back to. Um, I do like a library. I am the sort of person that will go in and just get 10 books off the shelf and then just, you know, I, I don't, I want to kind of be surprised. I think with research, sometimes you don't know what you're always looking for. You know, I'll get all the books out on the floor and just open them, you know, what makes sense. And But the great thing about things like working on a collection, is I think it's forever changing. You know, a day up till the show, you can bring other ideas into it. You know, you're always looking for references and ideas to try and convey what you're trying to think and what you're trying to say, because it's like cooking a huge meal. It, there's so many different elements. It can be a detail for a shoe, a detail for a neckline. It can be a slight, the way or the shape of the eye makeup, but not the color. It can be, you know, the length of the hair, but not the texture. It can be the color of the fabric, but not the dress. It's a real mixture of kind of sampling colors and drop, like some sketching. Um, but I guess the real sort of silhouettes and stuff come from me sewing and making and putting things on. There's never really a sort of mood board situation. Not to make it like really twee, but there's just so much out there to look at. I mean, you know, if we were in any country, we'd be looking at what you found in the charity shops in that country. Yeah. Like when we're in Paris, we always go to all the garrisons because there's just so much good stuff there. Like you can almost see the like historical fashion of a country through its charity shops, I guess. Ottomans 20, the last season was about, there was several ideas there. One of them was taking classic men's coats and tailoring and stuff and just seeing how you might feminize it a bit, but still keep it wearable for me or Stefan or someone. Yeah. You know, in Autumn Winter 19, it was about repeating stuff and making something glamorous out of something not so glamorous. So like a jersey had a trompe l'oeil print of these crystals, this crystal fabric that was really expensive that we bought and took photos of and then replicated and stuff. Yeah, it's always about it being familiar as well. I feel like that's kind of what the beginning of the brand was, is that kind of like familiar, unfamiliar kind of twist on things where it's like, yeah, taking a jumper, putting slashes in it. It's so untrend based, I think. I don't think you could look at any of our stuff and be like, ooh, buttons are in this season, like linked into things. Or like, oh, this, like these holes and jumpers are like really great for summer. I, I feel like there's definitely just like longevity and everything. And I think that's what we're trying to do as well is kind of have this like timeless, I don't know, aesthetic. I sourced all, most of the materials in the UK at to like 90%. And Basically, there's like a huge network of people that recycle garments, companies that sort those garments out, or uh, vintage wholesalers um, and secondhand wholesalers and dead stock wholesalers. So I approach those every season. I kind of have an idea of what I'm looking for. So say for like SS20, I wanted loads of light Levi style denim. So I reached out to all those wholesalers and sort to see what I could get. I partnered with a factory called Scoop in Portugal and they uh, give me loads of their dead stock fabric from producing for much bigger clients and they also produce the garments there. So I think even from the beginning it, it was very centred around like you know fashion and music and community and culture and then obviously from the very first collection right through to say the most recent ones like with um, with Astro Black for Spring 20 and The Abstract Truth for Winter 20 uh, for for Winter 20, um, yeah, like having Sons of Kemet play and, you know, um, as well as uh, Quake and Rago and Wulu and having those musicians and that community. And yeah, just sort of paying homage and celebrating both like past and present, mum and dad, the community I'm in and, you know, kind of intertwining that with uh, my fashion uh, collections. I'm trying to kind of put everything in this melting pot and kind of come out with something new. But I think it makes people question what they think is good and bad and what they think is fashion almost and what they think isn't fashion. You know, some of the show pieces are almost like, it, it morphs into something else. I think this is kind of one of the problems with the internet is it's actually quite hard to document process as a designer to, to people that are looking. And also it's very, very hard to document mistakes. So people don't understand how many things you reject, how different things can look up before a show, you know. It's very difficult because I find it a really private process, but it's just, it's so much bigger than just a catwalk show at the end, you know, the process that goes into it and the build up. And to be honest, for most designers, I think everyone loves that bit as much as the show. It's not just a big glossy show. It's kind of a months and months of everything forming. That's the really exciting bit as well. It's, it's a lot of different, um, different processes, I guess. Fashion's grown into this big, huge thing where you forget that's really what decides people are going to buy clothes. It's how they feel in them. I am taking it as it comes. Yeah, I don't want to 
planet because that, that would never work out for me. I'm not that kind of person. I remember I was living in like a really shitty warehouse in Manor House and then <laughs> with my boyfriend and the, like the moment I just drop you an email and be like, oh, we want to do a studio visit because we want to start sort of collecting your work. And, you know, you're just like, what, why? And, you know, I'm like this 24-year-old making like fabric blobs in Manor House. Yeah. And it was never my ambition to become a creative director or a sort of artistic director. You know, that, that's not, I'm a designer or at some stretch I'm a sculptor or an artist, but I'm definitely not an artistic director. We don't design stuff in a way that is thinking about the impact first and then design second. It really is, you know, meant to be desirable and fun. I think Ella Wiley doesn't take itself too seriously, but whilst talking about serious issues and, you know, it's a brand that really tries to champion like community and fair working and sustainability, but the shows and the vibe of it are actually really fun. You know, like the, from down from the music, the lighting, the set, I really, we really hope it's like an experience and like a world that is desirable to be a part of. I think that the cultural sort of elements to it, from my background from being Indian, Nigerian, and being born in London, I think that also plays into an experience that maybe people haven't seen before. I hope that the brand sort of seen to be more than just clothes in a way. But when people wear the brand, I want them to feel like they've got something really special that they want to keep forever. Um, the way that we do this is like, again, through repurposing things. So if you've got a grey jumper from SS20, every grey jumper is slightly different because you're going to have something different in each patch. So I really hope that someone feels like they bought into something really special and something with longevity. I really hope when people come to a show, they, 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 there obviously is a certain element they know, like, you know, textiles and colour and there's certain things, of course, I'm going to do. But I think it's important for me to kind of make people think, oh, you know, they don't know what to expect in a way, I hope, because I think fashion should be directional. I think it should change each season to a degree. You know, obviously, it, I'm not talking about sales and like fast fashion, but I mean, like from an artistic point of view, I want to say something different. And also, I need to be interested and excited by it. It's always funny talking about your own work. I think you kind of start to even see things from a different point of view sometimes, because even though you think all this in your head, you don't always project it. You don't always say it out loud, you know, so I always think it's quite interesting to talk about it with people. Yeah, I kind of just came up with the three C's, which was like community, culture and craftsmanship. To have like Sims of Kemet on Vogue Runway with like Theon Cross on his tuba. I'm pretty sure that's probably the first tuba on Vogue. I mean, I hope it is. But, you know, that for me, I feel like that's when I'm adding something to the industry, which might not have been articulated in the same way or like not referenced in in a, in, a, in a authentic kind of capacity. But, you know, I'm not expecting to, for everyone to like the clothing, but I think probably the vibe's the most important thing.